Hello everyone, my name is Erika and in today's stream we're gonna be rigging Spine Boy in a snowball. So this is the project uh, that we're gonna be uh, using today. We're gonna be using some uh, uh, physics, that's why I placed uh, some presents so that we can have them uh, float around Spine Boy and Spine Boy is gonna be floaty uh, himself. Another thing that is interesting is that I deliberately chose a pose that is a bit uh, hard to rig otherwise. Um, I shared the link so you can follow along if you want and I'll show you a little bit of uh, uh, how this project is structured. In the link that I sent you there's gonna be already a spine file or there's also a JSON where you can import the file yourself if you're working from versions that are not the latest beta version of spine. So then let's see, let's once again do my favorite part which is ripping apart the project. Uh, let's go with the first parts, we have here the snowball and uh, it goes in front and behind and there's a reflection as well. I think for these I'm simply gonna, instead of doing uh, the moving apart, I'll disable the selection so I don't accidentally keep clicking on them. So to do this I'll select the image itself and uncheck select so I don't accidentally click them because they are fine as they are for now. I don't want to um, animate them or manipulate them and they kind of overlay everything. So let's disable the selection. Uh, so we have these. These are going to be very convenient for me because they are going to be great to explain the basics of how to obtain a fake 3D effect inside Spine. So in my mind what I had envisioned for Spine Boy uh, was that we'd be able in the end to shake Spine Boy around uh, with the whole snowball and have the contents uh, wobble around while uh, Spine Boy is floating otherwise uh, uh, the rest of the time. Which would be, I don't know, it felt right to use with physics and it would be, um, I, I thought it would make for a nice interactive animation. So uh, we're gonna try to do that. Plus, as mentioned, it has uh, some various parts that overlap that can have some interesting uh, ways of reading this that I'd like to show you, like these uh, various uh, arms and legs that are in perspective and uh, also here are some more floaty parts that are gonna look amazing when we are gonna be using the physics constraints, so I hope we'll have fun with that. And also here, oh, here I introduced something that is gonna be painful, which is art that is not completely straight. I generally like to add uh, something like this uh, um, so that it's painful to demonstrate why you shouldn't be doing that. The ideal version of these should be a version of the head that is perfectly straight so it can bounce in both directions. We're gonna see that when the art is curved like this we're gonna make it hard for ourselves and it's gonna be harder, uh, it's basically gonna be fixed in this position. It can maybe bend more, but it can never look nice, uh, uh, unfurled, we could, we could say, yeah. So uh, in a, a straight manner, so it's it can only cur uh, curl more. Okay, let's decompose the face. In this case, uh, I decided to create a mask that has the punched holes for the eyes. So we said we have the hat, we have the um, various parts of the hair. Now notice how, a big chunk, one piece. Uh, for all the parts that are tiny that I kind of want to float, uh, have them float on their own, I separated them. Then I have here the eyes, the eyes have all these parts separate as well, the reflection, etc. And these are like the basics when you want to, to have an eye. You need to have something that covers it so it stays within the bounds. Then the eye white, the iris pupil reflection and maybe some eyebrows on top. Then let's undo this. We also have the nose on a separate layer with its own shadow so I can move it freely however I want. Then we have the mouth. The mouth already has a built-in uh, double line, as you can see here, okay, where it has a little bit of uh, light. So wherever I place it, if I move it, it's gonna look fine, in theory. <laughs> We're gonna see. Then there's the ears. 
uh, notice how most of the year is painted like with a bit of an advanced bar, but for the parts that I'm sure no one is gonna see, I just painted them lazily. Here's the other ear. Then for the scarf, we have several pieces. Here we have the front, the middle part, and this other part. Why? Because they overlap. This will give me the freedom to move uh, these parts, giving a little bit of perspective. Also having the uh, parts that are supposed to be on different planes, because this is really behind and this is very in front, uh, without disturbing each other, but having some leeway in the way I can move this. Then here as well I have this piece. Okay, notice how the detail is once again concentrated towards the parts that are visible and the parts that are not visible are just sketched. Here some more parts are painted like this. How did we structure this? Oh look, no more gifts. <laughs> Let's undo here. Okay, so he has fingers and some shadow for the fingers here. Ah, that's the part behind actually, the glove. Okay, that's the part in front. Okay, uh, this, the fact that I painted also the uh, lines here will allow me to also move the fingers a little bit more freely so he can move the um, hands up or down and have some sort of perspective on this. Then here, okay, we have the arm in front, the arm behind, there is an arm behind, oh, there it is here. Now, notice how the important parts when creating this is that we can sort of have a round circle, okay? The better you do this, the better results you're gonna get. Here, it's not a perfect circle, so we're not gonna get perfect rotation in every direction. But when we do, like in this case, okay, where we even have a bigger cir uh, circle around, it's gonna be easier to rotate all these parts. You can almost see the circle here overlapping this part, which is where the various parts attach. Same here, we can imagine a circle and we're gonna be placing the bones in the middle of these imaginary circles. And then we have here a frontal part for the snow globe, shadows that are also separate so I can get the shadow to shrink or be bigger. Same here, I have a temporary shadow, which is I think a duplicate of these that I just flipped. And now we're actually going to start uh, by placing the first bones. So the first thing before actually creating the bones is always to ask ourselves what we want our uh, project to be able to do. And uh, you have to have clear in your mind the kind of movement that you're going for, because depending on that, we're gonna be changing how we place our bones. Uh, is a spine boy supposed to be walking at some point? I have no idea how he could be walking from this position, but that's something that you might want to do. Uh, then uh, he would need certain bones that make it easier to animate spine boy walking. Is it just gonna float in the void inside the snowball? The answer is yes in this case. So that means that we can use less bones. Next thing we're gonna have to figure out is once again, what is going to be the first bone, what is gonna be the center of these. Okay, let's look at the big pictures, big picture literally. So uh, that's gonna be the snowball. We're gonna be able, we want to be able to move the snowball around. And we could say that the snowball center is actually the center of all. Now this part here normally would be the gravity point, but we said that the final thing that we want to be able to do is shake this around. And so I imagine that we want this to stay most in focus and have this like kind of uh, as uh, something that is just attached uh, to this part uh, and so that is less important and not driving the motion. Driving the motion is the key word here. So the thing that is gonna drive the motion for the whole skeleton is gonna be the middle of this noble. Um, maybe we could have it start from here, which is where I imagined it, uh, but it could also just be the middle of the noble. It is for sure gonna be the middle of the noble where Spine Boy is placed. Let's start creating bones. We are in setup mode, we select the create tool and we select the root as the first bone. Okay, I'll select the root. I'm selecting first one random image and we said I'm gonna place that uh, maybe above here and I'm gonna give it a special icon. 
Okay. I enabled compensation so I can move the bone and adjust the position freely now. And I'm going to type a zero so I have it centered so I kind of have a reference of where the center is even if I'm not seeing it. And I don't want to touch the root. Here's the globe that I want to start creating the bone for. Now here's another trick for you. You can select the image like globe texture which is like this round part here. Perfect for me. And I'm going to choose new bone and that creates a bone in the middle of that now as you can see this has the unfortunate position of being right in the middle of spine boy's face which is because i wanted to have spine boy placed in the middle but it's kind of in the way which is why it's gonna be more convenient for me to actually move that using the other globe uh, bone that i created down here okay the globe border so i'm gonna parent these inside that so now when I move the two of them without compensation active, it's going to move both like this. I think I'm going to call, instead of globe borders, I'm just going to call these the uh, just globe holder. Okay. I said that I wanted to have this to be able to rotate my globe. I want to also parent more globe parts to that. And I think I'm gonna select all of these parts for sure and burn them to my globe texture, which is uh, this round bone in the middle. The, the bone that is absolutely in the middle. Maybe I'll change the icons, but I'll change them at the end. Uh, I can change it to this one because the child is in a neutral icon. I want to have a control set in place that will control the perspective here. If I just uh, create a new bone that I'm gonna be calling Snowball Perspective and that's gonna be the bone that is gonna control the perspective and I'm gonna place it here so I remember that I wanted to control basically this side and then have it maybe move around. On here I want to have a bone that will have all of Spine Boy's pieces. Generally, it is a good idea to start from the hips or the center of gravity of a character uh, so that uh, we can move the entirety of the character around. In this case, the hips still apply even if the character is floating. So I select the create tool, I'm in setup mode, and I select the parent bone. The parent bone is gonna be the globe texture here. Okay, so this bone in the middle. And that's gonna create, okay, I hold the control, which is command on Mac, and hover on the image to select it. I release control, and then I'm able to create the bone, okay, while seeing the outline, which is very convenient. Like, for example, if I want to place this while also considering the position of these two um, legs, and I want to see where they end, I select them too holding control or command on Mac and I'll aim maybe for this middle part here. I think it's a perfect place to start creating the rest of the body. So I'll also create an additional bone here. So I have the rest of Spine Boy's body starting from here. I was thinking it would be interesting instead of having this bone like this to also have a bone that controls the perspective of Spine Boy in the front part. So we're going crazy with this because it's not normally how I structure a rig, but we're experimenting. I could have a bone on the tip of this so I can still control the way the body rotates from this. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. And uh, I'll create a new bone. Okay, so I have this new bone on the tip. Now, because this bone was very dangerous, the globe texture bone. I think I'm gonna hide it temporarily by clicking on the visibility dot that is here. Okay, that makes it grayed out and as soon as I deselect it, it disappears. It's not like I deleted it because as soon as I press Ctrl H, Command H on Mac, uh, then it's gonna be revealed again and nothing happened. But it is okay like this hidden so i avoid clicking accidentally on it i have this bone that i'm gonna be able to move to shorten to change the perspective of spine board around i could skip this bone entirely but i like uh, the familiarity of having a bone that i usually have in my rig so i'm gonna keep that for now i think i'm gonna get it to have a rotation of zero again okay so it looks down like this 
and let's add some more bones so starting from here i can have the two bones that are gonna be holding the uh, arms okay i select this bone i select here and i place the first bone here then i create another one like this okay i think i'm gonna fix a little bit the rotation okay then if i select the bone i have to be in parent axis then when i choose new bone it will create a bone on the tip like this i'm not even gonna create a bone for this part i'm just gonna create the bone at the end okay by selecting the create tool this is gonna be my parent bone no 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 okay here's the image Here's the images that I want to be parented there, so I can see them. Okay, I'm gonna aim for the middle of the images here. Okay, and that's uh, more or less the middle. What about this? Okay, yeah, that's definitely the middle. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, the bone that will control the hand. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna just create a couple more bones here and then instead of completing the whole thing, I'm gonna show you one thing of your choice. I can explain the basics of fake 3D with the cubes or I can show you... Yeah, no, yeah, let's do that. I'll start with a simple cube and then we'll move to the gigantic um snow globe that it's gonna be more impressive and then we'll move to something more difficult which is how we apply this concept to a body